Let's talk about the four ways to speed up the growth of muscle. Now you have about 650 muscles in your body and I'm talking mainly the skeletal muscles, not into the other muscles, but the purpose of muscle is to create movement, to help you with posture, to help you even with your metabolism. If you don't have enough muscle mass, let's say you're, you're getting older and you lose your muscle, you lose your metabolism too. So you have a lot of mitochondria that helps you burn fat in your muscle. And then also muscle helps uh, pump the lymphatic system. And so if you don't move a lot, you're not going to pump your limp through your body. Now, there are two not surprising ways to increase muscle growth. You already know this. High intensity exercise and the consumption of protein. You're not going to grow muscles on a vegan burger, okay, or a plant-based burger. It's not going to happen. You need the best source of protein, and that would be animal protein. Steak and eggs are at the top of the list. Now, how much protein do you need? Anywhere between 0.8 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of weight. Now, what I mean by kilogram of weight, I'm talking about of your kilogram of lean body muscle weight. So if you're a really big person and you have a lot of fat, you got to do this calculation on your lean body mass. And I will put a link down below to kind of help you figure out that calculation. Now, if you're not into kilograms, you're into more in pounds, there's a different formula for that. I'm going to put that down below. When you're talking about grams of protein, we're not talking about the actual weight of a steak, for example. We're talking about the protein in that steak. Let's say, for example, if we talk about pounds, right, and you weigh about 185 pounds, and that's how much lean body mass you have that would come out to about 84 kilograms, okay? If we do the calculation on 0.8 grams, I would just times that times 84, and that comes out to 67 grams. And then if we look at the high range, 1.5 grams, and we do that calculation, we're talking between 67 grams of protein to 126 grams of protein. So what would determine if you're on the low end or the high end? Your age, how active you are, how much exercise you do, and the strength of your digestive system. Like if you're 95 years old, you're probably not gonna do the top highest amount of protein versus if you were an athlete at 20 years old. And some people might even need to go up to two grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. Now let's get into the surprising things that can increase the speed of muscle growth. First thing on the list is creatine, right? And by the way, creatine is in foods, especially meat, but... If we want to speed up the growth of muscle, we want to take it as a supplement. It's not necessarily creating muscle itself, but indirectly it is because creatine is kind of like a, a buffer or a substitute for energy, especially the initial high intensity exercise with short duration. Even before glucose is made, you use a type of creatine and that's used as energy to allow you to recycle or recover this ATP. And what's unique about that is when you exercise high intensity, short duration, that is what increases the muscle growth. And so creatine allows you to do that. If you don't have enough creatine, you're not gonna have the energy to work out like that, number one, and the energy that's supplying the system actually can help you grow this muscle. It allows you to do more work. I mean, if you're gonna go work out and build muscles, and you're tired, and you don't have enough energy, it's probably not going to happen. Now, as far as how much creatine you need, if you're really serious about building muscles, I would use 20 grams for about five days, and then go down to like a maintenance dosage of three grams for the rest of the month. And then you would cycle to a higher amount, 20 grams for five days, and then cycle back to your smaller maintenance amount. Number two, cold therapy. Now you can do cold showers, cold immersion, cryotherapy. There's a lot of different versions of this. When you're in the cold, the body has to do something very, very unique. It has to maintain the core temperature. So it has to generate a tremendous amount of energy to do that. So to do that, you're going to generate this type of brown fat, which then will stimulate the white fat, and you're going to burn a lot of calories. And so the combination of burning more calories, burning more fat, and the cold therapy, both in rats and humans, increases the expression of 
the muscle genes, okay, certain genes in your muscles that help the growth of muscle, as well as something called the RNA, which is kind of like the, the protein factory that makes different proteins. Cold therapy increases that. Cold therapy also decreases inflammation. Now, you may have heard um, studies that show that cold therapy actually does not increase your muscle, okay? It actually will shrink your muscles. That is true initially, but in the recovery phase, it will increase the muscle size. It's kind of like any type of stress, you can overdo it. We want intermittent type stress to the body to create some cool changes. All right, number three, intermittent fasting. There's one school of thought that if you're not eating, your muscles are gonna waste away. But what happens when you do intermittent fasting, you stimulate growth hormone, you stimulate all sorts of things that indirectly can potentially increase muscle through the hormone growth hormone. Here's the catch 22. You're probably not gonna grow any muscles if you're doing any type of prolonged fasting. I'm talking about just doing intermittent fasting like two meals a day not cutting your calories down, just not having the snacks. Because intermittent fasting will also make insulin more sensitive. So by fixing insulin resistance, you can actually get more insulin to the muscle because the snacking just kills this whole process. Here's another catch-22. You got to be somewhat healthy to do fasting. I mean, if you take a really sick person and you start to put them on this stress of fasting, it might not be the best thing to start them out on. I'm talking about a person who is not sickly, who has somewhat of a good health, and that can do this correctly and also combine at the same time the exercise because they have the energy to do it. Number four, arginine, and it can significantly help you increase growth hormone by inhibiting another hormone called somatostatin. So arginine kind of takes the brakes off of growth hormone. They've even given children that are a bit shorter than they should be about 2.2 grams of arginine and notice that they actually grew taller. But arginine is another surprising uh, way to enhance the growth of muscle. But what you want to do is you want to take a bit higher amounts, like between three to six grams per day on an empty stomach. And I think the best time to take it is about 30 minutes before you work out. Now, if you have not seen my other powerful video to grow muscles, I put it right here. Check it out.